Hello, so let's start with question number 15. Uh, it says that a rocket is fired upwards as it accelerates upwards after launching, after leaving the launch pad, which form of energy is changing? The chemical energy, yes, the chemical energy is changing because it's the stored energy. The gravitational potential energy, yes, it's attaining height, so the gravitational potential is also changing. The kinetic energy, yes, it's changing its speed, so the kinetic energy is also changing. Part B, chemical energy, gravitational potential energy, in part C, it's chemical, kinetic, in part B, it's gravitational potential and kinetic. So, considering all parts, A seems to be the correct option. Question number 16, a roll of tape of length 50 meters requires a constant force of 20 newton to unwrap it. What is the work done in unwrapping the whole roll? Work done is force multiplied by distance. The force is 20. The distance is 50 meters. So this gives us 1000 newton. So the appropriate answer is B. So question number 17 says a trolley of mass 600 kg is initially at point P on a slope at a height of 80 meter above ground level as shown the trolley is released from rest. The trolley is released from rest means that the initial speed at P is 0 and moves along the slope so it's coming to rest at point Q. At Q it comes to rest so the initial speed or the final speed at Q would also be 0. Uh, first coming to rest at point Q at height H above the ground level. That's the height H. The total distance PQ moved by the trolley along the slope is 1.5 km. A constant resistive force of 300 m opposes the motion of the trolley X. So that means that friction acts along the PQ and the work done against friction is FD which is 1.5 into 10 raised to the power 3 which is the distance and the resistive force is 300 newtons so the work done against friction becomes multiplying it up we will get Four fifty thousand meters. Now let's find the total energy at point P. At point P, the velocity is zero, so the only energy, the total energy, is the potential energy. So the potential energy is mgh. Mgh mass is given as six hundred kgs. G is 9.81 and the height is 80 meters. So this gives us 470.880 newtons. So this is the total energy at P. Now while this trolley comes towards Q, from this 4780.880, the frictional work done would be deducted. So we can say that the energy at Q would be equal to energy at P minus the work done against friction. So the energy at Q becomes potential energy at P which is 470880 minus the frictional force which is 45 zero so this becomes two zero eight eight zero and it's given in the question that at q the velocity is also zero is it it is at rest so we can write that two zero eight eight zero is equals to mgh which is six hundred into 9.8 into h which we have to find so the value of h becomes 20880 divided by 600 divided by 9.8 which becomes 3.5 meters so a is the appropriate answer 
So the next question number 18 says an object of weight 15 newton is pulled along a horizontal surface at a constant velocity of two meters per second. The force pulling the object is 12 newton at 30 degree to the horizontal as shown. What is the power used to move the object? We must know that the formula for power is power is equals to force into velocity. So we can see that the component of force is must be along the direction of velocity. So that must be 12 cos 30. So this will become power is equal to 12 cos 30 multiplied by the velocity which is 2. So the power becomes 20.8 watts. So B is the proper answer. So question number 19 says the spring constant of four springs are determined by plotting the following graph of the force against extension x. In which order of the graph shows the decreasing spring constant? So the spring constant is F equals Ke and the spring constant is F over E. So just divide and find the spring constant. So over here we get F divided by E, 10 divided by 5, so this becomes 2, so this becomes 10, 20 divided by 4, which becomes 5, 100 divided by 0.1, this becomes 1000, and this is 10 divided by 0.5, so this becomes 20. So it says which order of the graph shows decreasing spring constant. So largest to smallest. So the largest one is 1000 which is 3. Then it's 4th so which is 4. Then it's the second one which is 2 and then it's 1. So the appropriate answer is B. So the next question is the forces are applied to ends of a rod so that its length increases. The variation with force F of the extension P of the rod is shown. The point P is the elastic limit which shaded region shows the work done during the plastic deformation. So after the elastic deformation, there the region is called the plastic deformation which shows a permanent extension. So if I release it from here, it would show a plastic deformation, there would be a permanent extension. So the region showing the plastic deformation would be along the extension axis because work done is always along the extension axis and it would be something like this. This would be the required region. So let's see which options it shows. Part A, Part B, Part C is the proper answer. Always remember that the work done is always along the extension axis. So it show it asks about it asks us about the plastic deformation. So this is the required region. So question number twenty one says that the two identical waves are produced by sources at point P and Q. The waves travel along different paths to reach point R as shown. Both waves have a wavelength of six centimeter. The waves are in phase at point R. What is the phase difference between the wave as they leave points P and Q? So the first thing we must know is that the phase difference that the phase difference is equal to the path difference path difference divided by lambda multiplied by 360. So let's first find the path difference. In order to find the path difference, we must <coughs> know that we have a wavelength of 6 cm. So this would become 80 by 6 lambda, which would be 40 by 3 lambda. In terms of lambda, this is PR. And in terms of this, 100 by 6 would become 50 by so the path dif uh, so the path difference path difference would be qr minus pr qr minus pr 
so q or minus q r would become 50 